Hey everybody, I'm Tracy. And I'm Rachel. And this is another round with Heaven and Tracy. <laughs> My guest host today is the lovely Rachel Wilkerson Miller. Hey girl, hey. Hey. Uh, Rachel is a friend of mine and a BuzzFeed colleague. She's a senior editor at BuzzFeed, and I refer to her in my private life. I don't know if you know this, but I refer to you as the Black Martha Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely mean it as a compliment because she's got so many thoughts on organizing and self-care. Uh, so we're going to talk Martha Stewart shit. We're going to talk men and feminism, and we're going to do a Men Gotta Do Better segment because it's been too long, and y'all are still fucking up. It's my favorite topic. <laughs> uh, so ready to go. <laughs> Let's do it. You ready, Rach? I'm ready. Okay. We're going to start with the standard question. What do you do and why? Um, I am currently a senior editor at BuzzFeed. In general, I do editing and writing, um, usually covering things that fall under a lifestyle. So DIY, weddings, I just really like home stuff, kind of like goals, motivation, how to live your best life that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So what Rachel is not going to tell you is that she's basically the black Martha Stewart, at least in my <laughs> life. Um, I have been trying to, well, I've been wanting to get into hand lettering for a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm so intimidated because I have no artistic skills at I all. I actually don't really, like my mom is super artistic and mm -hmm. like she can just like sketch things out. She builds things. She's, in, it's incredible. Um, so when I compare myself to her, like I can't really draw. I can't really mm -hmm. do things like that. So I don't really think of myself as like particularly artistic. Interesting. So consider that like if you're worried about it. I, I mean, hand lettering is just really great. You should try it. We've uh, talked about this. I know. I know. I'm still too big a punk though. <laughs> um, so do you think that you get your DIY-ishness and like craftiness from your mom? Definitely. And also from my grandma. And it's interesting because they're kind of different in how they apply it. Like my grandma is a really great seamstress and so is my mom. But like my grandma would so like wedding dresses. She made my wedding dress. She's made them for like a lot of the women in my family and like even mm. like her friend's daughters. Aww. Whereas my mom is really like she'll build things. She makes these incredible Halloween costumes and she'll sew them. But like it's a lot more sort of like cartoon like and construction. But neither of them kind of do the things that like I tend to focus on, which like mm -hmm. I don't think I want to do anything my mom is great at because I could never do it as well as she could. <laughs> like she built a deck off the back of our house. Oh, my God. My mama did too. Are you serious? She's such a handyman. It's incredible. I, I like really regret that I didn't have my mom teach me how to use like a circular saw mm -hmm. because that's the sort of skill like you really need. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I definitely get it from her, though. I didn't like realize it until I was a lot older that I was crafty. I just like mm -hmm. was like, whatever, you know, like just do these things and DIY it. Or, and I didn't like make the connection of like, oh, that's like who I am as a person who yeah. makes things. So I feel like in the world of like at least like the media world of like popular DIY-ish people, there seems mm -hmm. to be a really big dearth of women of color. Mm -hmm. Is it just that like these women of color exist and they're not the ones who are like getting TV shows or are they just like, are we just like not making shit like that? No, I, th I think first and foremost that th these women exist and we're just not seeing them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think also like, I mean, I get really defensive when people say that like Pinterest is for white women, mm. like that like grates on my nerves because it makes this association between like things that are beautiful and lovely and like whiteness right. and mm -hmm. that I find just really kind of fucked up. Uh -huh. um, I think a lot of times when black women are making things or creating things, it's not given that sort of special sheen. So like canning has become kind of like, you know, canning mm -hmm. your own food or whatever has become like a hipster farmer's market thing. Yeah. Um, but like if you think about like just like black women make shit too, like, you know, like All the stuff time, out of like yeah. coconut oil and like other, you know, kind of mm -hmm. like home remedies and things like that. But it doesn't read to a mainstream audience is like, oh, this is like special and like lovely yeah. in a, that same way. But then, of course, when white people discover it, then mm -hmm. it kind of does. Oh my God. I mean, it's a tale as old as time. Yeah. <laughs> um, the way it gets shared and disseminated might be different too. As mm. we know, like it's maybe not being put on social media in the same way or like it's just not crossing the paths of the people who tend to like think about these things and notice these things. Um, mm -hmm. So when I'm like on Instagram or, you know, doing my job like looking for DIY kind of related things like I always get so so excited when I see mm -hmm. women of color and they are out there and a lot of times it's hard to find them in terms of bloggers and Instagrammers because they don't put themselves in the shots as much you're just seeing these beautiful things but right, when I right. see like a florist like holding a bouquet of flowers and I'm like oh oh mm -hmm. I think you're brown and yes. I like click through I get really excited and like Aww. there are a few other like uh, black bloggers that I follow and who are just creating like beautiful cool creative things so mm -hmm. I think they exist and it's it's about like elevating those voices and making sure that like they're getting the book deals of the TV shows or those right, kinds of right. things. So I do think that they um they're out there. Mm -hmm. I wonder. This is a theory that I came up with three seconds ago, um, <laughs> and I've had several sips of bourbon, so this could be 
completely asinine and nonsensical. But a thing that I think about is like, what kinds of women are allowed to be what types of women, mm-hmm. and what kinds of women are what kinds of women? <laughs> the women, <laughs> <laughs> the women, uh, <laughs> and what kind of women are allowed to uh, um, do certain things? Mm-hmm. I remember when I asked my mom. This is going to be a little bit of a tangent. But I was asking my mother about feminism and whether or not she considers herself a Mm -hmm. feminist. Because I certainly consider her a feminist. Mm -hmm. um, Because she just does feminist shit all the damn time. Mm -hmm. But she's like, no, I just... I just don't take any shit and I just take care of my family. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if like when black women and women of color are like making things and doing things Mm -hmm. like that are like home centric or whatever, Mm -hmm. it's not seen as a hobby. It's just seen as like the thing that black women do, Mm -hmm. taking care of their families and like Mm -hmm. other people's families. Well, and I think that's the flip side of it too, is like, when are you doing these things for an audience and when are you just doing them for yourselves? And Mm -hmm. so there is like now this new sort of industry where like your lifestyle is your brand and all of those things. And I think that like, Black women have always been creating these things and keeping house mm-hmm. and all of those things, but it's like also to have the time to photograph it and like right. put it on Instagram as a second part of that. So even if they mm-hmm. are doing it, they might not be sort of publicizing it and selling it in that way. But I For do sure. think that like, of, I mean, some of these things are just like they're just smart skills because that's what you have to do because it's a survival mechanism. Like you mm-hmm. have to know how to sew because it's cheaper. You have to, you know, exactly. You, and like, right, I mean, right. it's it's crazy to think of to say that like. Black women aren't lifestyle gurus. Like, I mean, think about like Southern cooking. Like, we mm. have this like long history. You're welcome, Paula Dean. Right. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I think that like the history of black women is sort of like the domestic, like that was their job. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. to take care of families. So mm-hmm. of course they know how to cook and yeah. how to like keep a home and, and make things beautiful. And I noticed, I've noticed lately, like so many makeup artists are black. So I think there's mm-hmm. also like that aspect of it that like black women are in all of those things. It's just yeah how we, they, there's still like a sheen of whiteness on beauty and home and lifestyle. And I think that's, I hope it changes Ooh, soon. Sheen we'll of whiteness. I'm gonna I'm adopting that into my <laughs> regular lexicon. It's a filter. It's a filter. <laughs> the oppression <Caucasia>. filter. Of- <laughs> the Caucasian filter. Use it on Instagram. <laughs> Lightens your skin. That's another topic for another day. Oh my gosh. So I have. W- just a million different questions about basically I'm essentially very slyly trying to get you to fix my life for me. Okay. You're the most organized person that I know. I think as far as I know. Yeah. I mean, I think that like, it's one of those things that if you're 80% organized and let people fill in the blanks, they'll believe you're organized. For sure. Like if you can do a few and sort of obvious things, like if you opened my desk, like uh-huh. there's a thing of goldfish crackers, like a couple of <laughs> tipped over goldfish crackers from several weeks ago. Like I, it, like I have, I have a line where like I, I care about things up until like uh-huh. a, a point and then I'm just like, I don't, yeah. just don't care. But like, you have a line though, care. like I care do. about things. I do, but like my, my bathroom sink lines is like full of my hair like I and that's where I just like I don't notice it and I don't care so I I, I appreciate that you think that I'm organized but I, I assure you that there's plenty of ways in which I feel like I uh-huh. don't have my shit together and I, I objectively don't have my <laughs> shit together that's actually a comfort because um I don't know I just feel I just feel seen and human in this moment because I have like zero percent that might not be true it's true. I don't. I'm not. None. I'm just not good at. Like I don't. I don't do shit until I have to because I'm on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Okay. So, um, which I say all this to say, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> I'm recently learning that organization and cleanliness have so much to do with self care. Totally. And which you are so good at. Yes. I and I think that's kind of why I've like sort of been drawn to it and develop it. And like you know, people talk shit about about Martha Stewart, about lifestyle, about mm-hmm. like creating your home and making it a beautiful place. And it's just like, but that's where you go at the end of the day. That's that where you should spend so be much time. Beautiful. It yeah. should be, and, and not beautiful isn't the right word, but it should feel beautiful to you. It should mm-hmm. feel comfortable and, and right. whatever that means to you. And so like, how do we make those spaces feel really special and like separate from the rest of the world and mm-hmm. like perfect for you? And so that's that's what I'm really interested in, like helping people build, like the, the things that you surround yourself with matter, like right. your home matters. And mm-hmm. so I just feel so much better when my home is that place for me. Mm-hmm. So I think that's kind of what motivates me. It's definitely from a place of self-care. So we can work on this. <laughs> Yay, there's hope for me. Mm-hmm. How does being organized translate into self-care? I mean, I think you know that feeling you get when you're late for something mm-hmm. and you're stressed out and you're anxious and like that is not a good feeling. So just at a really basic level, being on time for things feels good. And if you mm. think about it like that, then like that's 
in all aspects of your life. Like when you can't find things, yes. that's oh really gosh. stressful. I feel so red right now. <laughs> <laughs> and like I've been there. And like, so one of the like small things that I did in my mid twenties was like, when I first moved with my now husband, then boyfriend, like we were buying a bunch of new appliances, mm -hmm. like a vacuum and like all that stuff. And I just like started collecting all the instruction manuals and putting them in a folder. Oh my God, I do. And that. it was like, now I know where those things are so I don't have to look for it. And uh -huh. so it's like, then I don't have that anxiety, the stress, like it's a waste of time at the end of the day to be like, where yeah. is this thing? So like being organized just makes you feel better because you don't like it, it cuts out a huge source of anxiety. Yeah. And then also, which then spirals into like, oh, is this other person? frustrated with me because I'm late or whatever. Mm -hmm. So like just doing all of those things can be really calming, having it together yeah. knowing where stuff is. It makes a huge difference. This is my whole life. Another thing that I face as somebody with just poor life skills, I guess, <laughs> also like rampant anxiety is that like once, cause I always hit this point where I'm like, okay, I know where this thing is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it here so I never lose it again. Mm -hmm. And I never put it in the place where I say I'm going to. Okay. And I always lose it. Mm -hmm. And then I start to like get really down on myself because I'm just like, oh my God, you always do this. Why uh -huh. can't you get it together? Blah, blah, blah. And now I'm just like, maybe I, maybe I should just put stuff where it goes. Yeah. Maybe I'll be happier. And you should, this is like, I can't take credit for this tip. It came from Marie Kondo, who's like the lifestyle expert, author of Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up, which is like a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, but her whole thing is like put... Make the thing that things should go, like make it an easy place to remember, to access. Mm -hmm. Like if you have to get a chair or climb on a shelf to put something away, mm -hmm. you're not going to put it away. Right. So like make the thing go or like a place that you can easily reach uh -huh. so that like the putting it back doesn't become a huge hassle. Oh my God, that's genius. Yeah. This reminds me of a tweet that somebody sent me. It's one of those things that's so fucking simple, but like changes everything. Mm -hmm. Um, the tweet came from Wild Root Studio on Twitter. Hey, girl, hey. <laughs> and um, she said that it really made a difference for her when she started thinking of um, doing chores as self-care versus mm -hmm. do doing chores. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I'm so good at doing stuff that I don't want to do because I know it's going to make me feel better. Mm -hmm. Chores make me feel better. I don't like calling them chores because I don't mm -hmm. like chores, so I don't do them, so I stay miserable. Right. You know? But yeah. I was just like, this is brilliant. <sighs> I, there are some chores that don't feel like self-care, you <laughs> for know? For sure, yeah. Like, for me, I have to think of the negative. Like, if you don't do this, mm -hmm. you will re like, you'll, you'll regret, regret it, it. You'll be annoyed. You'll feel bad about it. And that's um, – but I think a lot of people do see chores like self-care. And I know that when I'm anxious or stressed, I often get a cleaning instinct. I don't yeah. know about you. I do too. But I'll wait until, like, there's a mountain of just shit yeah. and trash in my apartment. And I'm mm. like, okay, if I don't do this now, I have to check myself. Oh, yeah, way. yeah. Well, that – I'm I meant more like if I'm just having, like – if I'm just stressed about the world in general. Oh, as a even, stress reliever. Yeah, even if my mm. apartment like is mostly fine, mm -hmm. grabbing onto that moment can really help. Like mm. if you're feeling anxious or like have a big problem you're trying to work through, like going and cleaning something mm -hmm. often makes you feel better. Hmm. It does get kind of meditative, I think. Yeah. The, the three times I've cleaned in my life, it was very, <laughs> it's very relaxing. You know, yeah. my mind was just kind of wandering. Do you put on music? Uh, yeah. What's your like cleaning soundtrack? Mm, I think it kind of depends on the mood that I'm in. If I'm cleaning because I'm like crazy stressed out, I'll probably put on Hamilton because that way I can yeah. just like repeat like the mm -hmm. lyrics and just like not think about anything. Yep. If it's because I don't know, I'm having friends coming over later mm. and I don't want them to see like a pile of dirty drawers in the corner. <laughs> Usually Beyonce. Okay, so mine are both like Hamilton and Beyonce. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's, those are the two things that oh I think to. Before it was Hamilton, it was just, before Hamilton yeah. existed, it was just Beyonce. It was just it's like, perfect. put on like, even like old Beyonce, like Any Crazy Beyonce in Love, like mm -hmm. it's Destiny's Child even. Like uh. just like put it on and you're like, 45 minutes later, like your house looks great. Surprise. It's the best, those yes. are my two. Oh. I depend on me. What would you say is the first step for someone who is not great at this organization thing or who is just now like making a concerted effort to get organized? What's a good starting place? Like what's the first step? I think it's figuring out what your priorities are and also kind of what your pain points are. Like mm -hmm. if you're if you're really disorganized but always being late seems to be like a really big thing. Like you could start by just focusing on that. Like if you try to And that's overhaul, what you mean by pain point? Yeah. Like if you the thing that seems mm. to be like stressing you out the most or stressing other people out the most. Um you could also like if you can't if everything is just a mess, you could just pick one that seems easiest. Just like pick something mm -hmm. to start with. Like whether it's like, okay, I'm gonna get more organized at work. 
or I'm going to like get organized in one room in my house, like just pick one thing to Mm -hmm. start with. And whether that's based on a goal or someone else outside, like a roommate telling you to get your shit together, Mm -hmm. thinking small rather than like that. Well, there's a tendency when you want to improve your life. It's like the New Year's resolution thing where like this mm-hmm. year I lose weight and I like save money. Yes. And, and it's just like you can't – like that's really hard to do yeah. all at once if you also like have a job and are a normal human. Mm-hmm. So just, <laughs> and my friend Rachel Sanders gave me really good advice at the beginning of 2015 or 2016 mm-hmm. that was just think small. Build up your confidence on the little things and get really good at the little things and then it's so mm-hmm. much easier to start doing the bigger things so it like it catches. Um, mm-hmm. And that's – it's good. It's great advice for writing and I've used it a ton this year but it's also really helpful – Pick one room, one closet. Yeah. Pick, you know, I'm going to be on time or I'm going to, sh- you know, show up on time to the one thing, even if you're not on time for everything. <laughs> right, I'm going to start right, being on right. time for work. This one thing. Yeah. yeah. For me, one of the big ones to like start with if I'm kind of all over the place and mm-hmm. I can recommend it to others um, is getting enough sleep. Like that's mm. the thing that I put, that was the very first thing when I was like, oh, I need to be healthier. Tell me more. Why sleep? For me, I can't do anything else right if I haven't gotten enough sleep. Like, <laughs> I actually noticed it this week because I had a really bad night of sleep one night, and I start dropping things is the first thing I notice, and That's I start so swearing a ton because like my brain's not working, <laughs> so I can't remember the word for anything. So I just call everything like like a fucker. I'm just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so just like you're not. Honey, can you pass me that fucker over there? <laughs> yeah. You mean the like, cereal? I can't remember the <laughs> right because you forget the word because you're just right, so tired. Right. Right. If if everything is out of control, mm-hmm. am I sleeping enough? Like that's what I start with and Uh so many people don't get enough sleep and like for no good reason like we're not talking about people who are working three jobs just just to stay afloat yeah it's just like what are you doing like i I have a post draft called go called go to bed assholes (laughs) wait what i have a draft of a post that's just called go to bed assholes (laughs) just telling people to go to bed go to bed like stop what you're doing and go to don't give me your excuses go the fuck to bed go the fuck to sleep i don't hear it (laughs) so do you have like um because I, I feel in my soul that you have, like, is there, like, a sleep routine that you, like, well, it's such and such a clock. It's time to shut everything yeah, down. Yeah, I mean, one of the big things of the, like, sleep experts say is, like, stick to a bedtime and a wake-up time. I've actually been using this website. It's called Sleepy Time. It's, like, sleepyti.me. Mm-hmm. And it's so cool. You can, like, you go to it and it says, see what time you need to get up if you go to bed right now. And you, like, tap the button. And it, like, so basically the idea is that you need to wake up in between sleep cycles to not be so tired that like if you wake up in the middle of the, like we go through these sleep cycles mm-hmm. and if you wake up when you're in one, you're really groggy. Like it's really hard to get right, up. Right, right. But if you wake up in between them, even if you got less sleep, mm-hmm. it'll still be easier to wake up mm-hmm. and like actually get out of bed and get your day started. What? Um, yeah. So you can also use it the reverse way. You can be like, I need to get up at like 6.45 tomorrow morning. What time should I go to bed? And it'll tell you. But I usually use the like, what time should I get up? Um, basically the sleep app tells you or website tells you what time to get up. So if it's like 1045 and I'm like about to shut down and I'll, it'll see like, okay, what time should I get up? And the, the cycles are 90 minutes long. So it sucks is a lot of times it'll be like, you can get up at like, you know, six o'clock or seven 30. And I'm like, mm. I could also get up at like 645. Like right. that would be the perfect yeah, time yeah, yeah. for me to get through my day. Um, uh-huh. but I found that a, if I do the six o'clock time, I do feel good. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times I actually wake up at the time that it tells me. So I've been using it for like at least a year now and it's oh, wow. it's actually pretty helpful. Um, huh. But also a big thing is like unplugging before bed. Ooh. And that's a really hard one for I me, don't for have everyone. It in my body to do it. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> but you make a concerted effort you, to do yeah, it? Yeah. Um, I set an alarm on my phone that tells me to like <laughs> time. Mm-hmm. It's just I think it's for 10 now. It tells you go to bed, asshole. It does. Actually, this is your like my like, sh- it's my warning. Mm. It's like, you need to go to bed soon. It's your turn off the phone, uh-huh. asshole, warning. <laughs> so like from like 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., my phone's in do not disturb. And then you can change it so you're like, the temperature of your screen changes to like more yellow than blue. Have you seen it? Oh, the like the, the it's color like the night of it. thing. Oh, yeah. yeah so yeah. it I changes. Have seen that. It's like it took me some getting used to because it's really weird at mm-hmm. first, but it like helps cut that blue light. So even if I am still on my phone, mm-hmm. the screen dims and it's not blue light. Yeah. Um, and then I try, I'm not great at it, but like I really try to unplug. Even if I just unplug for 15 minutes before bed, I notice I like get really drowsy really? and I like calm down and I sleep so much better Hmm. than I would have otherwise. So then everyone's just like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do Mm -hmm. if I can't be on my phone? Right. Well, my thing would be like, what if there's an emergency and somebody needs to reach me? Yeah. And that's like what a lot of my friends say. But do not disturb. The setting is usually that like you can you can set it to like 
always a lot of calls from certain people. So if it's mm. like your mom or something, mm-hmm. and you can also set it for like, if somebody calls you three times, it'll put it through. But I do think like a big part of making life changes is probably telling people around you that you're doing it. Mm. Um, Like my good friend who I like text with the most, if I'm like, oh my God, I got to get to bed early tonight. She'll like at, you know, 10.05 be like, hey, Mm -hmm. go to bed. Like you shouldn't be reading this. So like, and also then also like respecting that and not being like starting a conversation at 9.55 with me and being like, hey, I really need, you know, like if they know and then they can support you. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think telling other people is a good, good choice. You seem to be. Very, very good. Don't let me don't let me read you. It's not <laughs> accurate. But you seem to be really, really good at giving yourself permission to say no to things. Yes. I want to hear all about it because it's so hard, especially for women, especially mm-hmm. for black women to just be like, you yeah. know what? I don't like this. I don't want to do this. Mm-hmm. This is not for me. Me saying no doesn't mean that I'm like, oh, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just a thing that I need to do. So talk to me about that. Yeah. I mean, I think one thing to think about if you're having trouble saying no is like, how do you react when people say no to you? Do you really does it bother you that much? Like a lot of times, no. You're like, okay, cool. Yeah. Like it seems, someone says no, you're like, okay, that's reasonable and you move on. Mm-hmm. So we have this huge fear that if we say no to people, they're going to like hate they're us. They're going to hate us. They won't invite me to anything Right. Else. And like that's, un- I mean, maybe that's true. <laughs> maybe I don't get invited <laughs> Thanks, to things right? because I always say no. I actually, I can't say for a fact that they won't, but you know, like uh-huh. it's not a big deal for the most part. Um, mm-hmm. How did you learn to say no? You kind of have to start small. And I'm sure that when I started, I was more apologetic than I am now. Mm. Um, but really trying to keep the like, no is a complete sentence that Oprah said in yes, mind. Just, like, yeah. Reminding myself that like, it's, it's not that deep that people probably don't worry about it. Saying no is sort of setting a boundary. Boundaries are good. They're mm. important. And I look at it as like, I say no to things based on boundaries I've set for myself, based on my own priorities, based on the things like I know I need to do to be the person I want to be. Like saying no is a gift to other people because mm-hmm. If I say yes to everything and then I'm not getting enough sleep and then I'm like calling everything a fucker, like that's not good for everyone <laughs> around me. It's not good for anybody. Yeah. Like if I can't <laughs> function, then I'm going to start letting people down. And in general, mm. I think of being organized as a gift to other people because it's like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> like, sh- like your time is valuable. If I'm yeah. late, I'm wasting your time. Mm. So it's like the, the kind thing I can do is the thing I said I would do, which yeah. is show up on time. And if I can't be on time, it's kinder to just say no mm. instead of making you wait and feeling sure. Like, wouldn't you rather somebody just say no to you yeah. than waste your time? Absolutely. I'm very easy to like flake on as a friend. Mm-hmm. Like if I ask you to do something at the last minute, you're not into it, mm-hmm. you're having a tough time, your anxiety is up, girl, let me know. Yeah, you same. know, It's fine. Exactly. And it's I think the more- I do the same thing right. all the time. Right. <laughs> and like just being honest about that, I had a friend text me recently who was like, hey, I'm in your neighborhood this weekend. I haven't seen her in a while. I would have mm-hmm. loved to see her. I just like- it was a rough week. I haven't been in my apartment much. Like, I just kind of mm-hmm. want to hunker down this weekend. Yeah. And she got it. And it was uh, fine. Uh, shout out to yeah, friends and, who and support like, care. I think the other thing is, like, you can lead by example. Like, once you start to do it, be the first. Yeah. And know that, like, people will respect it and follow you. And mm-hmm. if they don't, like, they're wrong. <laughs> you know what? They're I just they're objectively it. wrong. <laughs> in a better way. Exactly. And another thing that I think of, like, if I'm, like, it's a weekend and folks are, like, out doing whatever, mm-hmm. I'm not feeling it. I'm just, like, I'm doing you a favor and staying home because yeah. I'm not going to be good company. I'm probably mm-hmm. going to have an attitude. We might get in a yes. fight. Yes. That's what I'm saying. And I'm going to blame it on you. It's doing you a favor <laughs> yeah. to say no. Like, if you, if I, going to your party is going to make me stressed out, you don't want me at your party. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And I think the flip side of that is that if somebody doesn't want to do something, then you have to respect it. Like, mm-hmm. that's. The, the deal I sort of strike that if somebody says no to me, mm-hmm. I'm not a dick about it. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Just like, like okay, fine. I get it. It's cool. Mm-hmm. You and know? if you're friends, you'll have other times to hang out. Yeah. I mean, fine. if it's like somebody like your best friend's getting married, then maybe yeah. try. Maybe try a Please. little bit. Please. Please show up. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> so do you ever get FOMO from saying no? First of all, I think that FOMO, like just the sound of it is just absurd. It's such an absurd. <laughs> yes. um, all caps. Right. <laughs> For our listeners, FOMO, if you are as confused as I was the first Mm -hmm. time I heard it, is the fear of missing out. F-O-M-O. Do you get FOMO, Rachel? I don't really. And I think part of that might just be because I'm, you know, older and Mm. (laughs) not one of the youths. I think that like FOMO is definitely (laughs) more prevalent when you're younger. I think it's it's sort of a confidence thing and it's sort of, it's a confidence in your own choices Mm. and in your place in the world I think like when I first got to college like it just felt like going out every weekend yeah like, what are you doing this weekend did you go out uh-huh. I gotta go out like that was it's the, the thing, thing that yeah. just everybody does it's yeah just and so to just be like no I didn't mm-hmm. feels really bad and so you want to have a thing to say even yeah. if it wasn't fun at least you can say you did it uh-huh and so it takes like maybe even years of like doing all these things that are not as fun as they were supposed to be to just mm. make have the confidence to be like 
you know what? Yeah. No, I didn't. I, I see it in like a lot of young people who've just come to New York where it's just like, I have to go out every weekend because yeah. I gotta live this life and I gotta meet people mm-hmm. and like I gotta do the thing. Yeah. I think I feel that way sometimes. Yeah. And one of my biggest annoyances in my own personal life is that like sometimes like when I'm like at home and I'm like sitting back and I'm watching like some trashy reality TV mm-hmm. show, which is a big part of my self care, mm-hmm. I'll start to like feel guilty for being at home alone versus like being like out in the world. Like, uh, I just feel like I should be doing something. Mm-hmm. I should be like out enjoying nature I should be at this mm-hmm. museum thing I should be doing this or that and like it really ruins like my alone time mm-hmm. like okay I've been by myself all weekend but like I've been so stressed out about being by right. myself all weekend I didn't have any fun yeah um, I don't have a point that's just the thing that I'm going through I think that goes back to the priorities like what I was saying like when you know when you're gonna decide what you want to work yeah. on like figure out what your priorities are like if your priority is feeling good mm-hmm. then like hang out at home and watch reality TV if your priority is really like I got to go out and take advantage of all the things in the city then like yeah. do that instead of the reality TV. But also like I try not to make my own personal goals so aggressive that there's mm. not still room to do the getting enough sleep. Like whatever your baseline is, if you need to have one day a weekend to watch reality TV, like uh-huh. that's your line. Yeah. So I was never a, like a weekend relaxer for a mm. really, really, really long time. And then I moved in with a white guy and I saw oh how white gosh. guys spend their time. Tell me like, everything. How did they spend their time? <laughs> They watch the History Channel for <laughs> hours. That's what they do. Ken That's Burns it. documentaries. I'm just like, hey, we've been watching Hitler shows for like 16 hours. Can we change the channel? I think I might be a white guy. I love that shit. <laughs> but like, it's not like all of my friends who have are married to white guys. It's the same thing. It's just like World what? War fucking two documentaries all weekend, <laughs> and they don't feel just bad. Just chilling. They they chillin'. there is no sense of like. Oh man, I should have gone to the grocery store. Like I should have mm. cleaned. Them. Like they feel no guilt. It's yeah, like this wild. is just, this is my right. This is yeah. My they're privilege. just like, what else would I do on a weekend? And I'm right. like, I can think of literally thirty things <laughs> that you should do on a weekend. <laughs> and like the difference in that is amazing to me. And I think that actually mm. helps just the like, wait. So there's there is an option to like do nothing. Yeah, like, I can. That's okay. And like the flip this side of that amazing. is like sometimes that means they like don't do things that like probably should be done mm-hmm. like chores but it's like the next time i'm in this situation i'm just gonna say to myself <laughs> what would chadwick do <laughs> yes and i want to watch the fucking history channel and do whatever yeah. i want to do they don't feel bad about it then they like you know women get shit on for watching what they oh watch and gosh. it's just like oh my god All the time. Uh, like <laughs> my husband would be watching ancient aliens if you seen that shit <laughs> like you're gonna tell ridiculous it's so ridiculous and i'm like oh that <laughs> that's a, that's fine but like right. you're gonna like shit on but i can't watch the bad girls club yeah really like it's all trash it's fine right let's just call it what it is <laughs> we all have right. the right the human right yeah. to watch trash all right rach mm-hmm. i feel like you have just dropped so many gems and jewels as the as the hip-hop kids would say <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't know if they've ever really said that <laughs> um but give me like a very quick summation like three of rachel's life tips for getting your shit together and living a better life okay go to bed okay number go the one. fuck to bed go the fuck to bed yeah. okay be on time and the easiest way to do that is to be honest with yourself about how long it takes you to get from point a to point b okay don't lie to yourself don't lie to yourself mm. in general that's just like good just tip, in like, general right. be on time don't waste other people's time mm-hmm. and say no to things mm. perfect say no when you need to say no you're welcome everybody your life has been instantly upgraded So, Rach, recently we asked our listeners to um, send us a voice memo of them telling us things that they're trying to unlearn. What are you trying to unlearn? Um, One of the big ones lately is I've been trying to stop using the word crazy to describe things, think of other people, think of things that I want even. But really, like, it's just... It's there's a lot of good reasons to stop using the there's word crazy. So many good ones, yeah. There's every reason in the world to stop calling people crazy. <laughs> For sure. We Especially like not. if it's a situation where like they're just not acting in a way that you want them mm-hmm. to act. Like that's exactly. Not fair. Uh, we got a lot of really, really great responses from you, our dear listeners, and we wanted to play some for you right now. You know, your question has me marinating deeply, and I just wanna say I'm really 
working to unlearn the colonized mind itself, the things that we've come into learning through either experience or education and the biases that can come from both. So yeah, that's what I'm unlearning, the colonized experience of being a Black American. I'm trying to unlearn, trying to stop acting gay in public. Um, I just have to be myself and not care who sees me acting gay. Uh, I also have to stop judging people because they're not gay in the way that I'm gay. Um, we're a marginalized group as it is, so you just have to be yourself. I would like to unlearn this habit that I have of being incredibly cruel to myself and um, not sticking up for myself. I'm a graduate student and something I'm working on is referring to the girls in my class as the women in my class. We're not children. So something that I've been working on and learning is using passive and uncertain language when I'm actually pretty certain about things. When I'm being asked to weigh in on something, I'll say things like, I think we should do, or maybe we could do, when really I know certainly that those are the things that we should be doing and instead should say, we should do this. I am trying to unlearn poor spending habits. I am an introvert, an empath, and I deal with depression and anxiety. I feel a lot and get overwhelmed. There's also been a lot of divorce and death in my circle of family and friends recently. I'm trying to grow from all of that and practice self-care in the midst of middle-aged dating and parenting. I'm having to unlearn that it is my job to comfort and take care of sad and needy men. I know feeling guilty about things we did or what we do helps us be more empathetic people in general, but I feel like... I feel guilty about things too easily. I think that by unlearning guilt, I learn how to, or I'm still learning how to put my own needs and desires before the needs and desires of others. And you know, to just want and need freely. I'm trying to unlearn internalized racism. As a middle class, multiple degree holding, corporate American employed, black female US citizen, this is something I'm forced to confront every day. I am trying to unlearn saying the word sorry. I think it's something that everyone says too much, especially women. What I want to unlearn is when I bump into people and I automatically go and say, oh, hey, I'm sorry. Yeah, I really want to unlearn that. So say I'm on the metro and some dude bumps into me. My instinct is to say I'm sorry when really I'm not. It wasn't my fault. I realized it's a verbal tick where I try to minimize myself to make other people feel more comfortable. I'm trying to unlearn apologizing for things I shouldn't have to apologize for, like enjoying a stupid thing that makes me happy. Nothing's a guilty pleasure if it brings you innocent joy. As women, we're kind of conditioned to almost just like apologize for our existence even. I just don't want to be sorry for that anymore. And I think that we are usually not sorry when we use the word, so it becomes meaningless. Um, so I would like to say, Sorry only if I am truly sorry, which is not often. Y'all have some really, really good goals. Some of them are tall orders, but we feel very, very confident mm -hmm. that you have everything that you need to do it. We are in your corner. We're behind you. Do it. Unlearn all the things except the things that you need to know. <laughs> So, Rach, one of the best things about you is that you are one of the most well-read feminists that I know. <laughs> um, I'm an angry feminist, card carrying. I like. love it. I love it. So we're going to do pew, pew, pew. Okay. Pew, 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 which, of course, is our rapid fire segment. But we tweak this one a little bit. Okay. So all these questions are going to be feminism related. Okay. You ready? Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. When did you first learn what feminism is? I actually have no idea. But one of my lifelong best friends told me that her first memory of me is in third grade. Oh, my gosh. Of me pushing a guy in the playground yes. of another a boy and saying never underestimate the power of a woman <laughs> <laughs> i've never not been a feminist i don't i don't I have in no idea where, yes i have no idea where i learned the word <laughs> but i've always been at it wow yeah well my next question was going to be when did you first start calling yourself a feminist um probably like high school or early college i mm -hmm. never i never didn't call myself a feminist but uh -huh. i don't quite know when i started using the word more mm -hmm. um 
it's just like it's just like been in my bones my entire life. Yeah. So a great quote that I have shamelessly stolen from you. And asked, <laughs> I think I asked Lim and Wilma Miranda you did, this question. Oh, you did. Yeah. It was a great day in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Um, but that quote is, behind every woke man is an exhausted feminist that you need to thank. Mm -hmm. Who owes you a thank you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, the world. I... <laughs> Everyone. Uh, <laughs> I mean, my husband. Mm -hmm. Um. Some of my guy friends, mm -hmm. some of the white men who work in the company that employs us, they know who they are. They, I don't think they would deny this. I don't want to dry. blow up their spot. No, but no, no, of course not. They know who they are. <laughs> You're doing the Lord's work. I try. Who is a male feminist, quote unquote, that you actually like or tolerate? So Joseph Gordon-Levitt was in Ooh. the BuzzFeed.com offices he's today cute. doing a video. He's real cute. He's, he's so more like cute. he's my new woke bay after this. Ah, he is so for real? he's like I knew he like he identifies as feminist. I remember it was like on Ellen. It was a big deal. Uh -huh. um, he is so thoughtful and so artic articulate. He was talking about like politics. He was talking about Snowden, his new movie, and I was just like I like left and I was just like I'm like fanning myself. I'm just <laughs> I'm like, like oh, we were goodness. all a little flustered, but he's so smart and thoughtful. Uh -huh. So I'm just like. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, you can stay. I didn't know Hi. that he was one of the woke babes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. He's my new favorite. Okay. So the president of the United States mm -hmm. just gave you unlimited funds to build a monument to a woman. Oh. Who do you choose? Oh, that's an amazing. Oh, that's a great question. Um, Ida B. Wells. That's who I'm going to go with. Just like an anti-lynching, fearless journalist, just I mean, like out there doing the work. It's like, a pretty big deal. She's just <laughs> her. The thing, um, I, go ahead. if I may, you may, I will. Do. Thank you. It's just like <laughs> there's so many women who we don't even know that there need to be statues of because they just got erased. Oh my gosh, we don't even know their names. Mm, mm, mm. So, who is a white feminist that you actually like and tolerate? Ooh, mm. that is a great question. Um, Lindy West Ooh. is amazing. Mm -hmm. Who is Lindy West? Lindy West is a writer. She now writes for the Guardian. Her book Shrill came out uh, a few months ago. I love She's that title. just she writes such, um, she's so funny mm -hmm. and so smart. And she's just one of the most articulate people writing about how women's bodies are treated, about fatness, about rape culture. She's just, mm -hmm. just a tremendous human. I just love every, like, everything she has to say. She's, you used to write for Jezebel and I just like every article of hers. It doesn't matter what it's about, it's good. Mm -hmm. I love her. All right, all right. Right, this is fantastic. I'm having a ball. <laughs> I would really love to ride this feminist conversation wave on out <laughs> and revisit a segment that we haven't done in a long time, which is crazy because it's always relevant. <laughs> it's eternally relevant. It's called Men Gotta Do Better. Mm. Um, <laughs> is there something, could there be anything? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that you think men need to do better at? Here's my favorite Men Gotta Do Better story that I mm. think like sums up the problem with why, like how men are not doing better. Okay. Well, this is how men are not doing better by their wives or girlfriends or significant others. I was talking to a friend several months ago and he was like having problems with his serious girlfriend. It was kind of at that like, I don't know if we should stay together and like maybe this is the one, maybe it's not phase. And he was like, I just don't know if we're compatible. Like there's some big red flags that I'm like worried about. I'm like, okay, like why don't you tell me like. Mm -hmm. How long have they been together? Uh, like around, like around a, more than a year. Okay. Um, and then they broke up and like. This was in the like, should we get back together phase? Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, so tell me some of the things that like you're worried about. And like, I'll, you know, we'll talk. And the girlfriend was great. She was like really, really, really smart. Mm -hmm. She's a feminist. Like, <laughs> right. she's great. She got it. She got yeah. it. So he's like, one of the things was like, oh, like I, you know, we have some like sort of differences in terms of like sex stuff, different like interests, desire levels, all those things. Mm -hmm. and he was like, and sometimes like, she just like wants to make out. And I was like, right. Yeah. And he was like, but like, I mean, like, that's fine. Like, making out is fine and all, but, like, I kind of, like, don't really want to do stuff unless, like, you know, mm -hmm. something's going to, like, we're going to have sex. Like, something's going to happen. And I'm like, I, what? He just didn't want to make out with her unless he was going to get to put his dick in her also. Trash. Like, that's trash. crazy to me. Capital this T is, trash. There are so many things uh, <laughs> that are worth fighting about. That, so This, this uh, is a red flag. <laughs> and, I mean, <laughs> So this is his reason for not knowing if they're compatible? Yeah. Was that like that? That's a thing that they're different about. What? And I, yes, I was. What? And, and, yes, and <laughs> I was like, so you're she. She wants to make out more. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, and I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? The nerve. I was like, <laughs> I was like what? I was like, so make out with her, yeah. and he was like, but, and I was like, making out is fun. Yeah, it is easy. It takes nothing out of you. Right. Like you, it's free. It costs you. It nothing. costs you nothing. And she's telling you that's a thing she wants you to do, yeah. and you. 
you don't understand then like wait, why maybe oh on a bigger gosh. like sex level like you're maybe if you just made out with her a few times then she'd let you fuck her in the ass bro <laughs> Like it's like, oh my! Like I just was so angry that I was just like, you need to do better. Wait, is that <laughs> the thing that he wants? I mean, <laughs> the thing that he actually wanted was a threesome. Oh my god! <laughs> but like, so excuse me. I'm okay. But like, okay. also that he wanted all of those things, and he was just like, I don't know. But he like, can't make out with her. He wants a threesome, wait, but he you, can't fucking yeah, make like out with you his don't girl. Understand. Like maybe if you make out with her and like she's more comfortable, then she'll right. be more open to these other things. But like you won't do this super super exactly. simple thing that like requires literally no work. It's so easy. Just, you can so sit down and do it. Bruh. Easy. You know what you gotta do for a threesome? That's, you gotta work. Uh, right. You gotta find a person. I'm saying. You don't worry about like it's. Oh it's, my god! It was gosh. so mind blowing to me, and I was just like, "Your girlfriend is so lucky that you have me." <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> I was so mad and angry, and I was just oh like, my "What? Goodness. What is happening? What is happening?" He was just like, "I don't wanna." <laughs> like, <laughs> but you want a threesome, though. yeah? But you want all these Bruh. other the entitlement. Oh was my truly god! Mind blowing. And and uh, I see shades of that in so many other situations, but I'm that so was the moment out. where like it distilled all. Like I just saw it all so clearly. I was like, oh uh, my god, this is you were raised to think that yes. what you just said to me is it's okay. Cool. Like and that's that's that, reasonable. Like, like right. you think that's a reasonable position to have? That we're here to like meet all of your needs, and you don't have yeah. to do shit. Yeah. In return. Yeah. That's literally it's not how wild. any human relationship works. It's wild. Rachel Marie, we did it. We are here and we did it. You now have a completely made up middle name. So you're officially part of the United States. What, what was it? Marie. Oh, yeah. That's not it. It's not Marie. <laughs> it is today, damn it. <laughs> so before we get out of here, we've got to do a thing. And that thing is buying around for someone or something mm -hmm. that we're really, really into. I've added a new true crime podcast to my repertoire, as they say in French. <laughs> uh -huh. um, it's a podcast called My Favorite Murder. It's hosted by two women comedians, Karen Kilgariff and Georgia Hardstark. They live in California, and they're just two women who, like me, are super, super obsessed with true crime stories mm -hmm. and, like, horrible, like, it's going to sound so bad. No. I <laughs> they're obsessed with grotesque murders, uh -huh. basically. And <laughs> you know, aren't we all who, like, who among us? Is, <laughs> what woman among who us hasn't among watched us? them and predicted her own grisly right. death at the hands of a man? Exactly. It's really like this is going to sound weird, but when I listen to their show, I feel like I understand how people feel when people listen to our show because they're just like, oh, here are these two women talking very freely mm -hmm. about things that don't get discussed very often. Yeah. I feel like I found my tribe sort of because I'm not alone and like nuts in the things that I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel when I listen to my favorite murder. <laughs> because I'm just like, oh, sensible women like me who are also very obsessed with grisly crimes. Yeah. You know, and who just, have... yeah. We've got a place to talk mm -hmm. about it now. Kindred spirits. Kindred spirits. Mm -hmm. So the show format is basically them just telling each other. This sounds so bad as I say it out loud. <laughs> it's just them telling each other stories of like very sensational, terrible, like true crime stories. That's like what my best friend and I do sometimes on road trips. <gasps> really? Yeah. Like one what? of us will just like take, you know, take the mic uh -huh. and I'll be like, like, you know, the crime stories, like, you know, every detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'll just be like, let me tell you what happened to John oh Benet Ramsey. Gosh. And she'll just be like, tell me. Ah! Like, you got it. You know, it's great. I love it's it. Good times. And then she'll be like, let me tell you about Amanda Knox. Oh she talked about Amanda Knox one day for like 90 minutes straight. It was incredible. Will you take me on your next road trip, please? Yes. I oh love my gosh. Yeah, great. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, is it is this a show about white women being murdered? Great question, because mm -hmm. that sort of brings me to my, what's the word? My hesitance, I guess, about yeah. the show. So they are both white ladies in California. Mm -hmm. And in the show's progression, I've noticed that they've tried really hard. Like they've made a very focused effort to talk about crimes where the victims are of color okay like it's a like one of them said she was like you know i don't want to just like profile white victims mm -hmm. because it's not just white women who get murdered mm -hmm. it's not just white folks who are victims of crime right so they're trying okay. they're trying okay it's an enjoyable show and i really like it it sounds like they have a really really good community and it just sounds like folks who are a little bit weird when it comes to crime who mm -hmm. have finally found their folks that's so, amazing. Yeah, I really like it. I recommend it. My favorite murder, hosted by Karen Kilgariff and Georgia Hartstark. Check All right, out. I will actually. All I'm right. going to. Will you really? Yeah, oh, I will. I'm let going me know to. You so like I'm it. sold. <laughs> Yay! I did a good job. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Rach, who's your round for? I'm gonna buy a round for my dentist. 
Oh, tell me everything. Yeah, okay. You have so great, great teeth. Thank you. Uh, her name is Dr. Sam. That's mm -hmm. uh, Her last name is Eiffel. Like, I fill like, cavities. That's really her name. <laughs> <laughs> she's awesome. Like Gwen Eiffel yeah. from The Thing. Yeah, she's in that's Clinton so Hill, perfect. Brooklyn. Uh -huh. um, if you go, tell them I refer to you. Mm -hmm. She's awesome. She's a black woman. All the women who work in her office, were pretty, except the receptionist, who's amazing. Uh -huh. uh, receptionist is a white woman. All the other women who work there I are black women. I love that the doctors are black and the receptionist is white. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's great. It's a great <laughs> office. They're so nice. I went a couple months ago. I've been flossing every day since. Yes, floss. So maybe I'm buying myself around for yes! flossing because I was like, oh, you well, because it. I had like not gotten a cleaning in more than a year. And I like hadn't been flossing. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the dentist and then I'm going to start flossing mm -hmm. and I'm going to get an electric toothbrush and I'm going to like, I'm going to yes. do this now. Oh my and gosh. I've been doing the flossing, but Dr. Sam is awesome Aww. and I loved her practice and it's all black women. So it's by around for everyone. At this Dr. is Sam's. amazing. Yeah. Highly recommend. Uh, so do you remember a while ago when there was like this quote unquote scientific study? I just did air quotes and yeah. rolled my eyes to the nth degree where they were like flossing doesn't really have any benefit. Truly. It was like the week after I had started flossing what? again and I was outraged. <laughs> and I was also like, this is bullshit uh -huh. because that's like, of course, getting the of shit course. between your teeth. Like, that's crazy. And then right. I read something that was like, oh, it's like flossing twice a day. It doesn't have benefits, but well, of of course it doesn't. If you floss right. in the morning, that's you... not going to help. But yeah. like, no, no. You got to get that shit out you, of there, Your man. mouth just feels cleaner. It feels yeah. better. I've been doing it every day. I feel good about it. Mm -hmm. It's it's like a, such a cheap and easy and quick way to like feel yeah. like you did something. Congrats. Yeah. Recommend I'm very it. proud of you. Everyone floss. Yeah. And go see Dr. Sam if you're in the New York area. I need a dentist. <laughs> Let's all go see Dr. Dr. Sam. Sam. She's um, amazing. Shout out to dental health. It's yeah. so important. It is. We did it. Another episode of another round in the can. In the can? In, in the, the books. books. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you knew where I was trying to go. <laughs> um, super, super big thank you to Miss Rachel Wilkerson Miller. Thank you for having me. Of course, it was a please joy. come back. You I would love so to. Fun. Where can people find you in your work? Um, they can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the underscore R E W M, my initials. So the room, um, <laughs> and I write a blog post each week uh, at the room t h e r e w m dot com, and uh, yeah, that if you go to any of those places, you'll mm -hmm. find the other places. So do it, yep. upgrade your entire life. Um, if you're interested in keeping your life pretty much the same, you can follow me on Twitter <laughs> <laughs> at Broken McPoverty because I don't have any <laughs> money. Um, <laughs> and per usual, you can follow our dear heaven at Heaven Rants. That's heaven like the place in the sky. Rants as a thing that men do all the fucking time. Whether or not anyone asks them to. Nobody ever no asks them to. Ever. They do it anyway. Yep. This episode was produced by the Pod Squad. Yay! Woo! Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> This episode was produced by Eleanor Kagan and Julia Ferlin with production help from Mick Kramer. Thank you to Paul Ruest at Argo Studios. Thank you to our in-house musicians, Jean Gray. You can follow her on Twitter at Jean Greasy and Don Will of the almighty Tanya Morgan. Yo, listen to Tanya Morgan's music. It's so, so good. Listen to Hooks, like right now. It's a really great song. You can follow Don Will at Don Will on Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter at Another Round. You can Facebook us at Another Round. You can email us at Another Round. We've made it very, very easy for you to find us. Please find us and talk to us and tell us things. You can sign up for our newsletter at buzzbeat.com slash another round slash newsletter. It is great. And if you got a couple extra dollars, you want you in another round mug, you want another round shirt, we got you. Go to shop.buzzbeat.com. Drink some water, take your meds, call your person, go to the dentist, floss your teeth, put on some lotion. Go also, the fuck to bed. <laughs> go the fuck to bed, everybody, right now. <laughs> right now. Go to bed. Good night. <laughs> Bye. Bye. There was one show where like these guys were like testing out ancient torture methods. The fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I would I would watch it. Yeah, actually, I watched that with my mom for like six hours one night. I'm not gonna lie. But it's like things like that where you're just like, what mm. are you doing? You know? So we should all live our lives with the confidence yep. of a white dude watching the history channel. Yeah. I knew you were gonna Find change your my history life. channel. Find and, your history and, channel. <laughs>